to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi, everybody. Welcome to New Life Live. Really glad you're with us here today. We're live on this Friday the 13th, and joining me, two people who are not bad luck ever, Dr. Sherry Kefford, Dr. Alice Benton. Hey, good to be with you, too. I'm actually yeah, feeling I'm really the, the good luck, though, because, forgive me for bragging, but it's very rare that I can say I have all my children's fingernails clipped and their hair trimmed, but I do. I think this is a good way to counteract the 13th. We're on, we're on a roll really already. Is. It really is. Now, you know. Can you do uh, mine, Alice? They really (laughs) need some work. (laughs) Yeah, they look like they do. Anyway, if you want to join us, if you want to join us on Friday the 13th here, it's 1 800 229 3000. Here's what it's called Triskaidekaphobia, the fear of the number 13. And then Friday the 13th is called Frigatriskadecaphobia. And uh, some people uh, say it has to do with the Last Supper and Judas betraying, and he was the 13th person at the table, that kind of thing. Others, the Knights Templar, uh, the Catholic military order uh, was arrested on the 13th in October 1307 by King Philip IV. I don't know. But anyway, uh, here's something you can do is you can overcome the fear of Friday the 13th by supporting this ministry on Friday the 13th. We would love that, and we're going to use that to help other people. Now, I just want to take a minute and tell you, I want to talk to you about something I don't talk about very often here, but we're going on a a crew. Every year we take a trip. We invite all of our folks uh, that are part of the New Life family, and we're doing it next year, and it's a river cruise Uh, on the Rhine, and we want you to come with us. It's worth saving up for. It really is going to be spectacular. And there are some things that we've asked for. Uh, The city of Worm is where uh, Martin Luther was called on the carpet by the Catholic Church after posting, uh, you know, his uh, posting there in, um, oh my goodness, right on the, the, the church door in uh, Wickenburg and then there is a place we're gonna go through it's called the gorge on this ship and there are castles all over and it's just spectacular people can't believe the beauty we're taking this river cruise because it's intimate it's small it's relaxing and I just I just wanted to to say hey at least go online at newlife.com if you have any interest because this is going to be a special special trip now let me tell you i i have wanted to do this for probably seven years and we were told that we would have to buy the whole ship before we could uh reserve it well uh finally the people we work with found a way we didn't have to do that it wasn't like we had to put up a half million we just had to have five people say they wanted to go and that happened and so now we're getting to do what we haven't been able to do and it's just going to be such a sweet time. And Milo and Kay are going to be teaching. And I'm going to be teaching. And the other folks at New Life are going to be devoting. So it just was <laughs> worth it for me. We're to going to be say, wishing, oh. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we should but, have bought a ticket, Alice. It's, <laughs> it's in 2020. And it really is. Um, it's worth saving for. It's going to be so, so special. And, um, I mean, you if you've ever wanted to go on... A new life trip you hear about how special they are they really are i mean it's just a very wonderful time and we get to know you better and you get to know us but call us at 1-800 new life about it or go online and find out newlife.com it's a great christmas present for somebody that you want to be crazy about you if you want to join us on the program 1-800-229-3000 we're live on friday the 13th and we're taking your calls for two hours Two hours. We're going to be here. You got the best here. Dr. Sherry Keffer, Dr. Alice Benton, Steve Arterburn. Your phone calls 1 800 229 3000.
I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Southern California February 28th to March the 1st. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, Steve Arterburn here, 1-800-229-3000, Dr. Sherry Keffer. Intimate Deception is a great book that she's written, and Alice Benton has not written a book. We have encouraged her, but she's so busy clipping nails, <laughs> clipping hair, <laughs> razoring, but she'll get there. She'll get there one of these days. But let's go to the phones, 1-800-229-3000, and let's talk to Christine from British Columbia, Canada, Sirius XM Satellite Radio 10 a.m. on channel 131 is where she hears us. Christine, how can we help you today? Good morning. Thank Hi. you for taking my call. Um, for my, my question is about related to my brother. We have somewhat of a, a strange relationship. We have communication every six months or so just to kind of check in and, and I let, you know, ask him how he's doing. Um, the strain in our relationship started around in his teens. We're now in our mid forties, and um, he uh, he has um, well, he's been a, a chronic marijuana smoker. He's even kind of part of the black market business, and um, I, I regularly reached out to him um, to let him know that I love and care for him when things got a little bit um, kind of crazy with his business, um, we, we kind of drew the line. My husband uh, said that he wasn't really welcome in our home, that, um, that we could continue talking, but that for him to come to our address would have kind of drawn, uh, we didn't really want to draw any attention to our family. So, okay. um, ever, All right, ever so. That, we, We've been able, unable to uh, come to a place where um, we're just, we've said all of our, our, our um, I'm sorry, we've said, I'm sorry your feelings were hurt. And he is, um, he is regularly um, just on the attack when we're talking. So I just, the, the question for you today is, do I, how do I let him know that I love him from a distance? He's constantly pushing away. He's constantly kind of in a fight about the past, even things that happened yeah. in our childhood. Okay. All right. So um, I, I want to make a quick comment, and then I'll turn it over to Sherry and then Alice. But sometimes people do things. They live a certain way, and they make choices, and then they relate to folks in ways that don't make it workable for us to be in a nice, healthy, normal relationship. And being loving and kind and available is literally all that we can do. And, and that doesn't even mean for people that are uh, doing something illegal and you're not wanting them around, you don't want to bring attention to your family. You could be, you could have someone in your family that you have nothing in common with other than you're in the same family. They aren't bad people, but you just, there's nothing else to talk about that you haven't gone over. There's nothing new. And you might have to decide this is as far as this relationship will, will go. Something may happen, a crisis or whatever might take us deeper, 
but I'm just going to accept rather than push and try to make something out of something that isn't possible. Now, that's just my take on certain situations. But Sherry, what do you think when you hear about a situation like this? So let me ask a quick question. Do you have, like in your parents, either mom or dad or grandparents, was anyone involved in any type of addictions, either to food or to drugs or alcohol, anything like that? Are you there, Christine? Christine, well, can you hear us? I'm not. Sorry, well, I just, uh, yes, I can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, I was just asking okay. if anybody, either in your mom or dad or grandparents or you know anyone you know in your family, has been involved with any kind of addictions, food, alcohol, drugs. I know we've you've told us about your brother, but anybody else mm -hmm. there? Uh. Not that I know of, no. Okay. So so this is the deal. I'm I'm hearing you and I get the sorries, right? I get the we're sorries, but y'all are in as much as I hear you love your brother, there's something which you may not know that y'all are doing. Is is you're really in a position of judgment with him. And so when we're critical or judging others, they're not going to run towards us. The, the normal reaction would be to run away, run in the opposite direction. So it's confusing. And I get, I get the marijuana and I get the marijuana business and I'm, I'm not pro marijuana. I think it's really harmful for the brain, right? And, and it's accepted right now, but I think in a few years down the road, it's gonna, they're gonna swing back because we're gonna see how much damage it's done. But bottom line is when we stand in that place of judging somebody because we're in a state of fear, fear never brings people, people closer. Fear pushes us away and it pushes other away from us. So, so what are you so afraid of with him coming around your home? Well, we're kind of past that stage. He had some people who uh, had some attempts on his life. Ooh. And and um, so my husband, we just have to. We just started a family, and he okay. just said, "Like we can talk to you. We can meet you somewhere else, but you can't come to our house because they can't know who we are. Although that information is probably accessible." So he's done some bad drug um, deals. He's done some bad drug deals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, that's new information for us, right? So that is a good yeah. judgment. That's a protection judgment. And and so have you been really clear with him as to why you can't be around him because you fear for your safety? Well, we were, and he's out of that situation. Um, and he's in a, uh, he is in a, in a, basically a marijuana uh, operation that is um is licensed by the government so okay he's so removed. Okay. Did, so he's removed did, from that situation and you know i've said sorry that 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 really hurt him but i gave our reasons why um and really since then it's just been a fight 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 okay. so, so um, christine and, and he, he talks christine he says, i christine accept me how i am Christine, I see this a, a little bit differently. Um, what came to mind right away for me when you started talking was Romans twelve eighteen, that God asks us as much as it depends on us, we're to live at peace with everyone. And and I think mm -hmm. you've made all, all the good and appropriate attempts I can think of to be in good contact with your brother if he's willing to make healthy choices. Now it seems like he's made some, but he's still deeply involved in the business, so there's still reason to be concerned. So it may be that you have done everything you can, and now all that's left to do is keeping a protective distance until he's healthier and perhaps out of the business, if he ever will be. But of course, to always pray and fast for his sake, that, that he will repent, that his mind will be changed. There you go. You pray, you send letters that maybe don't have a return address on them so that if somebody gets it, they can't tell where you are. You you text, emails, 
you just let him know, hey, thinking about you, you know, it's one thing to say I'm praying for you, which means you're sick and broken and, and, and I'm better than you. It's another thing to say, hey, well, I was just thinking about you and I hope you're doing well. This might be the only goodness that you can put into his life. And I really do think prayer uh, is a powerful, powerful tool that you can use there. Um, let, let me just let me send you a copy of Take Your Life Back. I think it's a, it's a great book here. You have a great heart, Christine. Um, and I just think that you offer love and grace and kindness. And that's a that's probably about the limit that you can go. Steve. And, and I do think your husband stepped in there and mm -hmm. set a boundary that was awfully powerful and awfully appropriate. In your loving series, don't you have a book about loving somebody with addictions? I do. Let oh. me send that to you. Mm -hmm. Understanding and loving a person with a chemical dependency problem. And uh, in there it talks about certainly not how to enable it, but also how not uh, to feel badly when they don't get better, when you don't love them into health or care for them into health. All right, let's, uh, let's go over here to Arlene. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is where she listens on WBYN. Now, that is one amazing station. Arlene, how are you doing today, and how could we help you? I'm doing good. Thank you for taking my call. Um, sure. I've been, uh, I was born again nine years ago, and I've been listening to your station, uh, you know, your program, and um, I believe I've been a narcissist, and um, I've been working on that, praying. Uh, but I have hurt my son very badly by it. And I was actually just listening to another show where they said that, like, the people that were involved with people that are narcissists, they, there's uh, uh, something that they have to deal with, you know, with it. Um, I'm just trying to find help um, that I can help my son with. All right, let me ask you this. What is something that you think, what's something you've done that you think is harmful or a way of being with him that you think has hurt him? Oh, well, I was always very controlling. I, I was delivered from uh, alcoholism, and I was a horrible mother when he was growing up. Okay. And... He says that out at the age of five, he was molested by someone, mm. which I did not know about until he was like 20, and he was drinking one night, and, and so was I at the time. And he told me what happened, and um, I, I'm sure I didn't handle it correctly. You know, like I wanted to go beat the guy up or whatever, you know, at the time. Okay. Um, All right. So... so <laughs> So he, he is, like, depressed all the time. He still drinks. And, okay. um... Are you yeah, in any kind of recovery? And, and he's on... Uh, I go to church now. God is my recovery. Um, I read my Bible every day. I'm in prison ministry, and, um, you know, I... The Lord has kept me going. <laughs> all right? I haven't had a drink in nine years. I... I surrendered my life to Jesus, and he took my alcoholism away. Okay. I just, but I want to encourage now, you, like I want to encourage you, Arlene, Arlene, I want to yeah. encourage you that one thing you might want to consider is to get in a recovery program. Why? Because, well, maybe you are growing in other ways, but it might kind of lead the way for your son to do the same thing. Because he uh -huh. might be waiting to be delivered like you were. And when we're uh -huh. delivered, we certainly still need a growth program and a 12-step program like Life Recovery could be that. Um, Alice, what are you Hi. thinking here on, um, on Arlene? Well, Arlene, another push I would give in the direction Steve is turning you is that the recovery groups help us to live out the biblical principles that you're studying every day with other people around us. And that's really the other ingredient that we need in addition to that individual relationship with God. He works our, our maturation process 
through other believers. And so it's, it's, it's actually one of the best gifts that you can give to your son is continuing to pursue your own growth to show your son the change in your behavior. And I have to say, you're, you're the only person I remember calling and confessing, I think I'm a narcissist. We yeah, only get calls true. from people yeah. around a narcissist. So right. you're already on the right track with that. And learning to be yeah. more selfless is what will show your son that you realize what you've done and you're, you're, you're making amends, you're moving forward. That's part of recovery. And I Sherry, have, quick comment. Uh, yeah. Quick comment. You know what? I, I think all addicts have some level of narcissism. And mm-hmm. so yeah. I, I kind of want to have you think about peeling back that label of narcissism and really starting to own the fact that you were an alcoholic and you're, oh, I own it. <laughs> well, but, but I would beg to differ a little bit. Mm-hmm. I I'd like to just spend a couple minutes with you when we come back. All right. You're listening to new life live. We'll talk to Arlene about narcissism, alcoholism, a couple of labels. How do you deal with it? We'll be back. My wife had found me out and came home one weekend. She had revealed my secret. The only reason I was sorry at that time is because I had been caught. I had had the Every Man's Battle book for years and pulled that book out that weekend and found the phone number on the back and called it. And then a week later, I was at Every Man's Battle. It really gave me the start I needed for my recovery. I never had had that opportunity to sit down with guys I didn't even know and totally open up. The good thing was, was I was opening up to guys I didn't even know. So why did I care? Just lay it all out on the table. I have nothing to lose. You need to check it out. At least go online, check out what it's about, and take the chance and go do it. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to go on struggling. But you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1 800 639 5433. It's 1 800 New Life. I was really living a very anxiety filled life. I turned on New Life, and the topic that day was about anxiety. And just by listening, I got relief. You can help New Life Live stay in the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you a set of four devotionals, 100 Days of Character, Peace, Prayer, and the newly released 100 Days of Healing. Plus, there are ongoing benefits like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. I did go to Take Your Life Back. That's been immensely helpful to me. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here. And Arlene was delivered from alcoholism. And um, Sherry, you have some concerns about the label narcissism and her accepting the full dimension of alcoholism talk about that. yeah so Arlene and you know what I am grateful that God delivered you truly truly what what a gift but one of the gifts we don't get when we get delivered is is something called you know salt of the earth transformation and I think both Steve and Alice were kind of really inviting you into a process but let me tell you why I think it would be so important for you to bravely trust us and try going to an Al-Anon and an AA meeting for a while. And I'm going to say both because I think that you're stuck in trying to explain this part of you that is still self-serving. And so to put narcissism on that, it it feels like it kind of goes away because you have a name for it, a label. But I want you to go back in so that you can do some heart work as far as hearing other stories, 
crying, listening to the dilemma of your son's woundedness around you being married to your alcohol and really not protecting him from his sexual abuse. Not because you weren't an amazing mom. You love his heart. But your alcohol under the influence caused you to to not protect him. And he got even more hurt. And so that's deeper work for you to do. Before you're ever going to understand his pain, we have to understand the harm that was done because of the choices we made. And, and deliverance keeps us out of that path. But it's a much higher road, harder road, but deeper road to go back to those roots so you can understand more about the harm. Here, here's, a, here's a thought, Arlene. You, you decide that tonight or tomorrow night and a lot of uh, open AA meetings um, or um, even Al-Anon meetings, a lot of open meetings happen on Friday night. But you would be able to call him and say, hey, I went to an AA meeting last night and I thought of you and I thought of here are all these people with such hope and oh, they've been through things much worse than you and and uh, I had I had such a great experience there and you know, um, I don't know if you're in the same town you might say let's go to next week or or hey when I come visit you let's go together but I think you could use this as a way to get to his heart and make up for some of the stuff you feel badly about lead him into recovery and the worst thing is you're gonna walk away from an AA meeting saying wow I'm so grateful it's been nine years since I've done that. Mm -hmm. So grateful I've been saved from some of these other things that people have experienced. I think it'll be good for you. I think it'll be maybe a way to lead him. Now I'm going to do two life recovery Bibles. And I think if you'll look at the, at the life recovery Bible, uh, you're going to see just how going through the 12 steps increases your faith walk with God. So I'll give you one for you and one for him. I'll send you two workbooks also because that's really something that is so very, very helpful. Steve, you, made me, you, you made me think of something. And one more quick thought. What if Arlene was to go to an adult child of an alcoholic group? There you go. Because then yeah. you're going to be sitting with other mm -hmm. kids, yeah. Yeah. adults, that were in your son's situation it, it it does strip us down to kind of help us own the impact so we're asking yeah. you to be brave girl we believe in you we do you know what we're here for is to help people that need it and here we can send a life recovery bible uh, we've got them you can call 1-800 new life and say, tell me about that 12-step bible uh, I tell you, it has helped, literally, I can say this, it has helped millions of people. Three million of those have been sold. Isn't that incredible? You might want to get in a life recovery group or just get a counselor or there's another book. Uh, Take Your Life Back is, is probably the most valuable one I have there. Healing is a Choice. Sherry, the most valuable book she's ever written is Intimate Deception. Now, it's the only book she's written, but <laughs> I was gonna uh, say it's, that. <laughs> it's so powerful. And... And, and I just hope and pray you'd call us, 1-800-NEW-LIFE, for two reasons. One, say, hey, I want you guys to continue to do what you're doing. Here's, here's a gift year in. Or you get a resource that might help you or someone else. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Our number here, 1-800-229-3000. That's our number here. Let's go back to the phones. We're going to be here for another hour and a half. And right now, let's talk with Sophia from Riverside, California, listening on KKLA. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's going on? Um, so my question is, um, how do I overcome my husband's manipulation? Um, I, I had to leave him about, it's been like three weeks now because he relapsed and he was using drugs. So I didn't see him coming out of it. So I had to leave. And now he's demanding me to go back. Uh, he hasn't done a thing to change, and he wants me to go back because he needs to have sex, and or else he's gonna go find it somewhere else. So I just need help in how to how to um, you know how to go through this. Well, you have called the right me. place. You've called the right place, Sophia. I want you to hold on. We'll go to this break, and we'll help you right after 
like this. It's always great when you can call right before the break because guess what we do at the break? We talk about you and how to best help you. Our phone number, 1-800-229-3000. We're here for another hour and a half. Two PhDs and a guy who acts like he's got one (laughs) right here on New Life Live. We'll be back after this. my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against. And families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family it doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. All right. So, Sophia, your husband is saying, come home. I want to be sexual with you, and if you don't, I'm going somewhere else. Now, uh, let's start with you, Sherry. I mean, this is horrible to be uh, just used and to be told i want to commit this act with you uh what do you what do you think i mean what's our best hope for sophia this is horrible yeah so you know what i'm really glad you called us and i'm glad that you're separated right now because really what he's wanting is sex on demand and and Mm -hmm. it's it's explainable because he's an addict right? Addicts want what they want and they want it right now. And so I think you stay the course. Um, The the fear though is, oh my gosh, if I don't, then I'm giving him license to go whatever to prostitutes or I mean, it's just so simple today to get that. How do you feel about that dilemma? Well, I feel, I mean, I think I'm okay with it. I mean, I know it'll, it'll definitely, you know, I'll never go back again if he does that. And I just tell him, you know, that's between him and God. You know, if he wants to do that, then go ahead and do it. But sometimes I feel like if I'm doing something wrong, that's the way he makes me feel, that I, that it's my fault because I left, and that's what he's telling everybody as well. Okay. So he's in, the, the, he, right, he's in the victim position, right? He's an addict yes. in the victim yes. position. But I think it's really critical that you say this is, hey, that's not the way I want this to turn out. But if you do choose to go outside our marriage, you're risking our marriage not being intact. I'm, you know, I can't do that. I I can't be in a relationship and risk my body if you're going to act out. But I really would like to have you go to, and is it alcohol, drugs, so an NA group? What what kind of drugs is he using? 
It's drugs. I, I think it's crack. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's big time, girl. Mm-hmm. That's big time. Yeah. And you, you need to be in your own recovery with other people who are in relationship especially with men like him, but whatever. But are you going to any kind of codependency or any kind of recovery group for you? Um, no, I am going to, no, I'm not. I'm just going to start okay. going to therapy. That's all. Okay. Well, I'm going to suggest that you go to a recovery group like also. Like Al-Anon for somebody yeah. who's using mm-hmm. drugs. That You'll be in such a good community of people that mm-hmm. can help you. And, and Sophia, no, just, yeah. you'll, you'll need female mm-hmm. peers around you that can remind you of the strength we're hearing from you today and the resolve when your husband starts upping the ante and making the threats worse mm-hmm. and then you get shaky in what the right thing is to do. That's when those kind of groups that know your story come around you and, and help you uphold mm-hmm. your, your commitment to a higher standard for yourself and your husband. All right, now I want to okay. go out on a limb here. I want to go out on a limb, mm-hmm. Sophia. I want you to hold on because, uh, and, and we're going to send you, uh, I mean, he hasn't done it yet that we know of, but I'm going to send you Intimate Deception by Sherry Keffer, and I'm going to send you Take Your Life Back. But these two women that are on with me, um, I think have uh, spoken more strongly about not withholding sex than, mm-hmm. than most uh, shows would ever um, say and so I, I want to balance what I'm about to say with that. I also uh, am such an advocate for uh, sex not being the the big prize that it's part of the relationship. We don't we don't use it to um, you know demand things or whatever. We're respectful both ways. But here's here's where I want to go with this. If a, if a man said, um, you know, you you need to have sex with me. You're my wife, and he had a knife uh, next to him in the bed. What person would say, well, you need to fulfill uh, your your responsibility as his wife, even though he has a knife or um, an axe or a gun next to him? No, you wouldn't say that. You would say, hey. You need to take this dangerous thing and, and get rid of it. And then we can come together and be intimate together. And you certainly wouldn't tell that person, yeah, under any circumstance, you go and fulfill him sexually. It's demeaning. It's belittling. It's depersonalizing. And so I'm just going to say to you that this is an example where a guy is addicted He's threatening. He's demanding. I just don't think that that is what the scripture uh, covers when it says don't withhold sex from each other except when you both agree in times of prayer. But I want to hear from you two guys because you've been really strong in what you've said to others about this. What do you think about about that, Sherry? I just think it's a time for safety right now Mm because you're not safe. I mean, and truly with addicts and especially if he's doing crack, there's a chance that he may have already gone out there. And and so uh, if you ever think of it in the future, I wouldn't do it without being protected because you don't want to end up with an STD, but it's that risky. So I say right now, safety, no sex for that very reason you said, Steve. And yeah, it, and Alice, your thoughts? In these kind of circumstances, the husband has the responsibility for being the one who makes the situation, um, who removes safe sex from the situation so that a wife in Sophia's position might be able to say to herself, I'm willing to be intimate with a safe, healthy, um, sober husband. And then it's his decision whether or not he's becoming that husband or he's remaining unsafe. So, so mm-hmm. really, the husband has the power to make himself the kind of safe husband that can be available to her for that or decide to stay out of that safety range. Yeah. I have a chapter in my book called Remember When Sex Was Safe and Skydiving Was Dangerous. And in there I have a graph of what healthy sexuality looks like and what unhealthy sexuality looks like. And unhealthy sexuality includes demands, coercion, um, unsafe situations. And so it's clearly out of bounds for right now. Mm. All right. I hope that's helpful to you and um, we'll send you Take Your Life Back and also Intimate Deception. I'm really sorry for what you're going through. 
And uh, 1-800-NEW-LIFE is where you call to get some help if you need it. Every Man's Battle is January the 10th in D.C. Intimacy and Marriage, February the 14th. Two life-changing events. But we've got counselors. Why not decide in 2020 something is going to be different, and it's going to be you? All right, let's go to Jackie calling from, um, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Okay, let's go to, uh, hold on, I clicked the wrong clicker. Let's go to Jackie. There she is right there, and uh, she is calling from Pittsburgh. Hi, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing well today. How could Um, we help? So I'm an amputee. Um, I'm living in a non-handicapped situation right now. I'm very grateful to have both my parents to be able to live under their roof because I haven't been able to get back to work yet and get independent. But their dynamic is incredibly unhealthy, and it's really causing a lot of fear and anxiety for me right now. My father, um, I haven't been able to pick things up and carry things around the house and move things. So my father has been moving other people's belongings, which I'm pretty sure they teach you in kindergarten. If it's not yours, don't touch it. But my father is a narcissist, and he's using emotional and psychological abuse or purposely ignoring my mother and I, uh, moving belongings, putting things in walkways at night. So it's a very volatile situation as far as passive-aggressive abuse. And I'm, I'm calling to ask for encouragement because I can look back in the last 15 years of my life and see how God has always come through. But this season is getting very dark. There's a lot of anxiety and fear of, you know, like I I heard earlier in the program about, you know, we need to be loving and kind and be there for a relationship. But if this relationship with my father is always going to remain abusive, what are some good, healthy ways to cope with this? Okay. Now, is the most um, abusive thing he's done is putting things in your way at night and moving things, or does it go beyond that? Well, there has never been physical abuse. Um, there has been verbal abuse in the past. Um, but it's, it's a lot of head games. He likes to play head games. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's tearing me down on a level that other people would look at my life and say, well, nobody's family is perfect, which is true. But I'm struggling to have healthy relationships. And even to, I can look back over the last decade of my life and say, where are my friendships? You know, like I'm the common yeah. denominator. For and and oh, hold on. And what does your mom athlete? say? What what does your mom say about what's going on? Um, she's she's very. I don't want to say helpless, um, but that's the general feeling going around between the two of us now because it has it waxes and it wanes and it's gotten worse recently. Does she know it's a problem? Yes. Okay. And Jackie, we'll give you some how, help right after this. How long are you going to be there for? Just give us an idea. It sounds like you're transitioning right now. Um, well, I've been amputated just over a year and a half, and um, as soon as I can get a job and I can get out, I right. will. Hold but on. Like I said. We'll be back. She said, we need to talk. She's asked me for the first time if I would consider myself a sex addict. You know, I thought it was just about admitting the things that I had done wrong. I I never had a clue that it was about redeeming our story. You know, I thought it was just about coming clean on what I had done. I had no idea how to help her with her pain. She was a mess, I was a mess, and, and we got divorced. Going to EMB, surrounding myself with these other men, they accepted me for who I was and what I had done, but they challenged me to step up and do better. You know, they'll be around other men who are not just pointing the finger, but um, willing to get in and wade through it with them, you know, get in the trenches. They'll get hope from this workshop. Take my sweet wife and my story. We were divorced, remarried, and on our way to what I think uh, will be the sweetest years of our lives. You know, it's no longer simply about surviving. For the first time ever, you know, we're thriving, we're enjoying where we're at. Hey, listen, if you're struggling, we want to see you at the workshop. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family, or marriage, 
marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You're a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clear, appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in the biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Steve Arterburn here. We're talking with Jackie and I, I just really feel her and she's just uh, an, an amputee in a tough situation with parents there. Uh, Sherry, you want to continue with her? Yeah. So, hey, Jackie, I, um, my thought is you're going to need some oxygen. <laughs> why you're there and and what I mean by that is you're gonna need some breaks away to in order to stay in your reality core mind because when somebody is doing psychological abuse when they do these mind spins we can lose our way and it sounds like your mom is under the influence and has been there a long time as he's been bullying her and so you can't save her but let me tell you what you can do is i would take my mom by the arm and i would have her take me to the closest coda group codependency anonymous which is really a group yep. that's all about helping to build your core helping to regard yourself as a person of dignity helping you learn how to love yourself and see your needs that are god-given divine rightful needs and that together you being a compadre with her could be the best gift you could ever give her and give yourself at the same time now i've got to ask yeah. you jackie I, uh, no go ahead but what's your response to that well i was i was going to add I've, I've been recovering from codependency now for about 10 years i used to go to a group but the nearest group is last i checked about 60 miles away so it is quite a drive um so well, that is something i haven't had is a, a group of coda yeah well you know what it's so funny coda is like an underworld there's one group that might be 60 miles away but if you guys drive there one time i promise you there's going to be probably five other groups that are closer mm -hmm. to you but it's a it's a volunteer-led group so you don't really know until you go and i know this from my own coda recovery right i i had to go to a group and mm -hmm. and then i found out that we're five or six more closer to where i was at and and jackie um mm -hmm. i just wondering have you done the kind of grieving that's needed to be done do you think um you know as far as amputation as far as my family yeah. dynamic <laughs> well the amputation um, the amputation i'm i'm doing well with today i i did ha i i'm having a little bit of a a leg hiccup as i call it that i've had to be out of my leg the last couple of days which kind of breeds the stress of i'm in the house and i don't feel welcome to be in the house because if mm -hmm. i'm sitting all day i'm going to pull out painting stuff and then i'm making a mess and then Oh, there's more stuff around. So it just kind of breeds that dynamic. But the oxygen thing is very true. Yeah, I, I, over the last five years before I became an amputee, I had about a year and a half that I didn't stay in one place more than three days. And I just kind of lived out of a bag. And that was pretty rough. Mm. Um, so now that I'm back at my parents, it's, I haven't been bouncing from place to place. But it is, it, it, I'm lost because yeah. all I see day in, day out is this, this, Lies. Yeah. Lies. It's Dude. it's crazy well, to go back and see it. I love your resiliency. I love your strength. And I want you to get your hands on Leslie Vernick's book and I don't know if we have that one to give away, Steve. That's called The we Emotionally do. Destructive yeah. Relationship. We'll get it to her. Yeah, The Emotionally yeah. Destructive. It'd be so good for you to read. And I'm going to send healing as a choice and I'm going to hope that that's a great blessing to you. You know, um I don't have a lot of time. We're going to do another program. I, let's just see if we can get to Kelly real quick. But um, maybe not. I was wanting to talk with Kelly. Um, uh, yeah, let's talk to Kelly. Uh, Kelly, I don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to get to your call. And anybody else, uh, we've got another program we're taping after this, 
229-3000. How could we help, Kelly? Okay, so I have an 11-year-old son, and he's a great kid, loving kid. But when we have to go into a fearful situation for a child, his mind completely blanks out. And just deer in the headlights, we don't know how to control him. We don't know how to help him. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for insight with that problem. You know, it can be getting shots or at the dentist or even sleeping over at grandma's house in a dark room. Okay. You know, nurses come away crying, you know. It's not a good situation, so. Okay. And how much time since he's turned 11 have you spent just holding him as if he were not 11? Um, As if he were younger, you mean? Yeah. Or. Well, see, a lot of times us dads, we, okay. But a lot of times we we quit holding, and so that was just one thing. I would really up my holding time with him, um, and I would up my my deeper questions. Sherry, what are, and and Alice, what are some deeper questions that that he could be asking and they could be talking about to maybe get to the heart of it? So I had a family come in and they were showing me pictures of their son when, uh, uh, family photos, and he was the kid in the picture that would like squinch his face and and look so scared in situations that was were overstimulating. There's a book by Elaine Aaron which talks about the highly sensitive child. There's yeah. actually about 20% of the people in our population have a neurosystem that is that's overstimulated. That would be the first book I would ask you to read and to begin to understand that it's not something he's trying to do, it's something his system is causing him mm-hmm. to do. And there's yeah. some very practical tools in there that you can help him with learning how to f- calm down. What about you, Alice? your thoughts here? Well, Kelly, this is a really frustrating process to deal with our young kids when we need to get things done. But I want to gently challenge you to question that you want to try to control him. I think that was one of the words that you used. And he's going to need a lot of comfort and choices where he has some power in getting to make parts of these decisions, even though, of course, he has to go to the doctor and he has to get a shot. But he may need to be able to choose you know, what, what comfort he gets and for how long before the appointment or what what reward he gets afterwards for being brave and pushing through it and giving him that chance to talk through the fears without trying to minimize them or push them away too quickly. That's what helps diminish the fear better over time. Mm. Well, I uh, I hope something we've said here is helpful. I think tell the name of the book he could get. Um, yeah, it's Highly Sensitive Child by Elaine Aaron. Okay. But maybe we can send him How We Love Our Kids by Milo. That's Dad. a great book for this. Right. Yes. And I'm going to send you Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles mm-hmm. because it's for kids 8 to 12. Oh, and cool. I'll, it's a faith builder. And uh, anybody else that wants one, $20, and I'll uh, you, you call 1-800-NEW-LIFE, $20 will send it to you. I'll autograph it personally and send it to the child, grandchild, niece, or nephew. You call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But I, I just want to take a minute as we close up. And by the way, we've got another program we're taping, 1-800-229-3000. This is a great chance to get some uh, answers here, 1-800-229-3000. But this time of year, we need your help more than any other time because uh, this is the giving season. And what you give has everything to do with what we're going to be able to do this next year and we are we are going after millennials who have been raised in a post christian culture we're going after them we're going after below younger generation z because we, it, it is so hard out there we want to help parents raise these kids who are just saturated with pornography and and uh, the possessions that they feel entitled to and and a lot of folks getting out there and coming back home and it's really really sad so we want to help but we can't do it without you we love doing our workshops but we need help getting more people to those workshops you guys have sent folks to new life oh, to get help so out of true. your practice you know what I, it makes me think of john and karen um who were went through all our workshops um seven years ago and there was an affair that was being hidden but John went to EMB and they've walked with us uh, throughout it but now mm. they're on the other side he's six years yeah. sober 
and they're they're really influencing other couples and so it matters it does matter call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE if you can help us 1-800-NEW-LIFE thanks for listening we hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life we want you to know that we're here for you but you also need to know that new life live is a listener supported ministry to make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again on Monday for New Life Live.